Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Selamat pagi Good morning Good morning Professors Dignitaries Colleagues Students Ladies and gentlemen Welcome to University of Indonesia I am Evi Fitriani I am a lecturer at International Relations Department University of Indonesia And Europe, European Studies Center University of Indonesia I will uh, be the moderator as well as the uh, MC for this occasion. I would like to uh, welcome Ambassador McCanning to our university. Uh, I hope you will have a great time this morning with our discussion with student colleagues and professors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this occasion is a uh, uh, host by University of Indonesia and the British Embassy in Jakarta uh, in order to to, to like collaboration in the climate change issue. We have Center for uh, Climate Change at University of Indonesia and in this occasion uh, th this issue will be on the climate change. Uh, without further ado, uh, we will have Rector Gumilar Sumantri, Rector of University of Indonesia to welcome all of us and then we will follow with the discussion with our four speakers. Professor Gumilar, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are, we are very, very happy to have with us this morning His Excellency Mark Canning, the UK Ambassador. Ambassador Canning is no stranger to Indonesia or to UE. We'll come also to all of our other British uh, friends and to all of you here this morning. The focus of this visit is on the extremely important issue of the predicted rise in global temperatures and the likely impacts this will have in particular here in Indonesia. I would like to thank the UK for its efforts in this regard and the way it has been working with Indonesia to help reduce carbon emission and encourage strong but sustainable economic growth here. Research studies conducted here in Indonesia have confirmed the reality of climate change as reported by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and made it possible for us to predict what is going to happen in the coming decades if we allow things to go on as they are. The impacts on Indonesia with even the most conservative rise in temperatures are alarming. They include flooding of coastal land and the loss of arable land, water shortages, soil degradation, and lower crop yields and the spread of diseases like malaria. Ladies and gentlemen, the impacts of human activity are going to be serious socially and economically. Doing something is not something we can put off. UI considers climate change a priority and that is reflected in our research teaching and administration. We run courses on the environment from undergraduate to doctoral level. We have also initiated a world university ranking system called Green Metric World University Ranking, which gives higher education institutions around the world a greenness score based on date they submit online. Our climate change strategy has a number of key objectives. We want to understand how climate change affects water security, 
food security, health security, and of course, community livelihood. We want to perform research that monitors key indicators for helping ecosystem adapt to climate change. We want to be involved in the cre creation of policies and programs aimed at reducing emissions. We also want to be involved in awareness rising of the process of climate change and its causes such as deforestation. Ladies and gentlemen, in all of this, we want to work together with different kinds of institution, government, research, NGO, and private sector to help develop viable and economically attractive alternative energy sources and also sustainable business practices. The UE Climate Change Research Center has produced a good deal of research on climate change, deforestation, and sustainability. Its core focus areas are policy creation, red readiness, multidisciplinary approaches to ecosystem adaptation and sustainable financing. We at UE believe strongly that Indonesia should fully commit to an immediate and medium term action to combat climate change. We currently depend a great deal on fossil fuels and a huge forest resources. This obviously needs to be managed wisely. We at UE are ready to take the lead in pursuing large scale research to provide valid and reliable data for our local situation. The map that you are presenting to us today, I'm sure, will go a long way to stimulating joint action. We look forward to working on a green print for sustainable growth in partnership with you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gumilar. Without further ado, we'll start our discussion with our four uh, speakers. I would like to invite Ambassador McCanny, Ibu Amanda katidini Mr. Mark George, and Mr. Stuart Bruce. Please come forward. Right. Uh, I would like to introduce Ambassador McCanning before uh, he, uh, he gives speech. Ambassador McCanning has been in Indonesia several times, and this is the second post for him. Uh, he was uh, here in 93 and 97 as the first secretary at the British Embassy in Jakarta, and he also served as a senior diplomat in Kuala Lumpur and then British Ambassador in Burma or Myanmar and also British Ambassador in Zimbabwe before he came to Indonesia in 2011. He got education at the London University in a modern history and also Master in Business Administration. I would like to invite Ambassador um, McCanning to deliver uh, his speech. Please, Ambassador. Assalamu alaikum. 
Selamat pagi semua. Selamat pagi kepada Bapa Rektor Profesor Gumila. Saya sangat senang mendapatkan kesempatan untuk berada di UI pada pagi hari ini. Nama saya Mark Canning, duta besar Inggeris untuk Indonesia dan ASEAN, dan saya menjabat posisi ini di Indonesia kira-kira sudah lapan bulan. Tapi ini adalah yang kedua kalinya saya ditempatkan di Indonesia sebagai perwakilan pemerintah Inggeris. Pertama kali saya ditugaskan di sini pada tahun 93 hingga tahun 98 di Departemen Perdagangan di Kedutaan Inggeris. Dan sekarang saya di sini sebagai duta besar di negara yang sangat luas dan hebat ini. Mohon maaf, bahasa Indonesia saya masih kurang lancar. Jadi izinkan saya kembali ke bahasa ibu saya, yaitu, yaitu bahasa Inggeris. It's a great pleasure to be with you today, and thank you to so many students for, for joining us. Being here with you, uh, being back in this university, I think fills me with a sense of optimism because I see in you the future of this great country of Indonesia. Since I was last here, Indonesia has moved from a dictatorship to a democracy. It has become a country of increasing political and economic significance. It is now the world's 18th largest economy and the third largest democracy in the world. It's an economy which, despite all the bad things that are happening economically around the world, particularly in Europe, um, is continuing to grow at a rapid rate. You have developed a press that is free and which is vibrant, and you have developed some important institutions of, of democracy. So for me, I have seen a huge transformation in, in this country. There are, as we all know, still challenges to be overcome. We read about them every day in the press. The government itself acknowledges that. But Indonesia, for us, for Britain, is quite clearly a country which is on the move, a country with a real future. And as I say, you, the young of this country, have an important part in determining what that future is to be. But you are also not just the future of Indonesia. You are the custodians, the protectors of all the natural things that are to be found within this country. This is a nation which is home to around 15% of the biodiversity in the world. The plants, the animals, 15% have their home in this country. And looking after these things, in many ways, is the most important thing that you can do. So the role of Indonesia and the role of all of you who call it home is going to be very important as we try globally to reduce deforestation, to reduce environmental damage, and to reduce the level of CO2, the level of carbon dioxide emissions. Because as Indonesia has developed in economic terms, it has also become a major emitter of CO2. Indonesia is now the third largest emitter of, of carbon dioxide in the world. And just to put that into perspective, although the Indonesian economy accounts for only half of 1% of global GDP, the 
CO2 emissions from Indonesia are around 5% of global emissions. So that tells you that your emissions are running out of synchronization for your economic development. As you know, President Yudhiono has shown real leadership in this area. He has made clear his determination to reduce the level of CO2 emissions. He wants to do this by 26% by 2020. And he has pledged to do it by 41% if Indonesia has the right level of international support to do it. So one of the most important things that the international community can do, one of the most important things that countries like Britain can do, is to help Indonesia meet this very difficult challenge. You will have seen around your campus this week the map which we have here. It's called the impact of a global temperature rise of four degrees in Southeast Asia. And it's a map which two weeks ago we presented to the Vice President, also to a number of other Indonesian uh, ministers, and to Park Kunturo and his team who are in the forefront of trying to address this problem. It's completely right that we should be presenting this to your university here in this library and in this university, which takes the issue of the environment, the protection of the environment, giving buildings a green credentials very seriously. The map that we will soon unveil was produced in December 2011 by the British Meteorological Office, the, the, the agency that looks at our weather and which has a, a worldwide reputation. And it shows some of the impacts that might occur in this part of the world, in Southeast Asia, if the global average temperature rises four degrees centigrade, seven degrees Fahrenheit, above pre-industrial levels. The map is very nice to look at, but if you look carefully, it conveys a worrying message. It illustrates what climate change is going to do if we don't do something to arrest its progress. The extent to which temperatures rise depends on whether we, commit, we continue to emit greenhouse gases into the atmosphere at its current rate, or whether we take together steps to reduce those emissions. The difference between those two courses of action, doing something and doing nothing, is illustrated in this map. You will see that for Indonesia, the difference is between some islands continuing to exist or disappearing. It's the difference between age-old ways of life continuing or, or being cut off. So the impacts are very, very serious. The Meteorological Office has been in business for over 150 years and it has a worldwide reputation and it has worked closely with another agency called the Hadley Center for Climate Prediction and Research to produce this map. Now, in this area you will find a lot of different opinions expressed about climate change. Some of the scientific modeling may produce slightly different results, but the outcomes that have been captured in this map have been cross-checked with a whole range of leading climate institutions around the world. And the picture that they present is one with which all those agencies um, agree. So it's a map which has tremendous knowledge and authority behind it.
That, if you like, is the bad news. Um, the good news, I think, is that governments are starting to wake up to this problem. Indonesia and Indonesia's president has certainly woken up to it and has made bold commitments to try and drive down the level of emissions. But the other thing that is happening, and you can see from how many students are with us today,